This is the JB Knives Ditch Pick. JB Knives is a company out of Texas, uh, and it's the company with, uh, it's John Stubbs and Brian Moreland, hence the J and the B. And uh, they are partners in this venture, making these really, really outstanding fixed blade knives. Um, this is one of many designs that they have. All of them are in a similar vein. I just uh, had a conversation with Brian Moreland. Check out the Knife Junkie podcast this week. Uh, what is it? Episode 158, I believe, or 258. Sorry, episode 258. Uh, I speak with Brian Moreland about, um, well, about the company, about everything having to do with JB Knives. And he does um, Pekiti, well, he has a background in Pekiti Tertia and different different kinds of collies and different kinds of, uh, you know, knife fighting, uh, mostly Filipino, I believe. And when he started uh, making knives, he made a self-defense a uh, Pical style knife uh, called the Sacket for his wife uh, that just sort of melts into the palm and has a small uh, tip down edge in blade. Um, it'd be very hard to disarm someone with that knife and just a great sort of uh, last ditch sort of self-defense tool. And from there they built, they built on that and uh, have made a bunch of other of these very self-defense-y, really elegant, beautiful, light, nasty knives. Uh, I have always had a thing for this design, the, the ditch pick. Now, ditch refers to a series of knives that they have uh, in which the blade steel is 1 16th of an inch thick. Um, so that's basically half as thick as normal. And so they are lighter weight, they are thinner, easier to carry, presumably, and um, but just equally nasty. Now, these... Um, you might think that a sixteenth of an inch is too thin. Um, well, uh, Brian Moreland and the guys at JB Knives are good good friends with uh, Ed Calderon, and they had Mr. Ed Calderon uh, test these knives in carcasses in their organic medium uh, knife fighting classes, where basically they take a pig, a dead pig, and they hang it, and they test different knives in it, different techniques, so that uh, they can take this sort of, um, well, knife fighting martial arts skills out of the theoretical and bring it into the real world so people can really feel what it's like to, um, you know, a, stab a moving car, you know, they'll, they'll swing the carcass around with ropes and you really get a chance to feel what it's like to dynamically um, be, you know, be jamming, using your knife in a dynamic situation like that. And you're not just doing it in front of a mirror, like in a martial arts studio, you're really actually, uh, you know, sticking a pig with it. And uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, and then, of course, they donate the pig to whatever local uh, animal, uh, and I mean, uh, food shelter kind of thing. So don't get up in arms. Uh, but in any case, the point is this 16th of an inch really works well. Um, it gets ridiculously sharp. It's very thin. It comes in and out of the target very easily. And uh, in other kind of testing, they've kind of pounded this into two by fours and done other sort of abusive testing with these thin ditch series knives. That's the 16th of an inch uh, thick blade, the ditch series. And they are very, they're much stronger than you might expect. So, uh, that was the real long way around of saying it's a sixteenth of an inch, but it's quite stout, quite sturdy, and extremely effective for its purpose. Um, naturally, this is not a camp knife. You know, you're not taking this into the woods. You're not making feather sticks with it. However, it is pretty thin and very sharp. And from what I hear, they hold up pretty well. So you might be able to uh, use this as an outdoors knife, but you'd have to be, uh, you know, really desperate to use this as your outdoors knife. All right, sorry, that was a tangent here. Okay, so this is naturally, uh, this is a Pical style knife in that it's intended to be carried and used tip down with the edge in. On this particular drop, and I think they might do this all the time, uh, I just so happened to be on Instagram when, when they had a, bu a bunch of these ready and, uh, you know, they were taking orders. And at the time they were offering... Um, just the this edge sharp 
or you could have the front edge also sharp, but only half the way, like a bayonet grind. And then they had a full length uh, sharpened, double sharpened option, which I took. I was like, you know, I'll regret it if I do anything other than uh, full Monty here. So I got this. Um, but I really am compelled by this knife. I love the shape of this handle. To me, it's perfect for this sort of Pical style grip. You've got this, you've got this uh, bird's beak here that really captures your hand. You've got a sort of du double finger choil. Sometimes my fingers, I don't know, when I first got it, it felt, uh, it felt awkward to me. And then, I don't know, I just pick it up now. My, my fingers fall perfectly uh, where they need to be in that double finger choil. And, uh, you know, um, my little fingers are smaller, so they fit in that smaller swale. My upper fingers are larger, they fit there. So it's a, it's a really nice grip. But also it looks like it would be great scaled up and used on like a Bowie. It'd be a great Bowie handle. Um, if you do need to use this in forward grip, regular grip, uh, it works quite nicely this way too. Uh, but I would be really careful doing this because my instinct is always to put my thumb on the back of the blade. Got some schmutz on there. Uh, I do carry this knife quite a bit because it's very light, very thin. Uh, this texturing on the G10 is quite aggressive, and I thought at first of knocking it down because this is uncomfortable when it's against my spare tire. Basically, I wear my, I wear it in my waistband, so this is right up against my skin. Uh, but with a T-shirt in between, it's just fine. And I decided not to knock down the texture on this like I do on my cold steels and my Emersons, just because if I really need this, like I'm not using this for anything other than to have on me as a weapon. And um, if I actually needed to use it, I would want all that gription that's available. Um, very, very sharp. Um, you know what? I, uh, I'll come back to what steel this is. I can't remember what steel this is. Um, but I'll come back to it <laughs> or watch the podcast. Cause I know we talk about that there. Uh, I do apologize, uh, but I don't feel like cutting and starting all over again. So, uh, maybe at some point during this video, I'll remember what steel this is. I keep thinking ADCRV too, but <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that's not it. So, uh, I have, uh, some other examples of knives that I want to show this with, um, these, these are great. They have so many other cool knives on offering. Go to JB, uh, JB Knives on Instagram to check out their, their stuff. And then they have, like I said, this, and then they have a number of others. But, but keep an eye on them because they cycle through uh, different designs and, and they're available at different times. They're not all available at the same time. I want to talk about the sheath. Uh, since I bought this uh, not very long ago, they've come out with a second sheath that you can purchase that's a um, pancake. So you've got the grommets all the way around. It's two pieces instead of one piece folded over, taco style like this. I'm always a fan first of taco style just because I like the footprint of a sheath to be as small as possible considering how I generally tend to carry it. However, in this case, I wouldn't mind getting that second uh, taco case. This knife, or uh, that second pancake sheath. This knife is very, very sharp, and as you can see, I actually accidentally thrust it through the sheath once. Uh, I got it off track, and it went thunk. And uh, not that it comes all the way through, and not you, know, you can see it peeking out right there. Usually, I just have to back it out. Put a little bit of epoxy or something there, so, but it doesn't come out enough to even uh, make a cut. But I don't want to. I don't want to risk it. Uh, this did not come with an ulti clip. Uh, I put this one on uh, myself. I just had to remember, did it or didn't it? Um, I, I tried a discrete carry concepts on this one and it didn't work. I can't remember why. I don't remember if the the holes didn't line up or if I just didn't. I kind of like how the ulti clip can give you a little bit of uh, flex, a little bit of room to move, um, though that does loosen the screw. So uh, it's probably a good idea to thread lock that if you're going to wear it. I know I see guys uh, with these knives that have these sort of, I don't know if it's a piece of an inner tube or what, but they'll, they'll have some sort of a rubber thing around the clip. And I think that stops this from happening, but I'm unsure about that. So what can I say? I, I, I think this is a really, really great knife. I highly recommend it if this is your 
your type of thing. They also have, um, not everything they do is is uh, Pical style self-defense or fighting knife. They do have a, a companion knife that's a great little drop point. Um, and I think they also have a ditch version of that, so a thinner one. Um, but uh, in any case, fit and finish, gorgeous. Everything about these knives are really, uh, to me, very, very compelling. All right, I'm going to show it with some other great fixed blade knives. I'm going to roll a lot of them through here. But the first aren't fixed blades. These are my two Pical style folders. Here, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to put this this way, uh, obscuring the logo. But here it is with the Emerson Elvia and with the Kaiser um, inversion. This is Dirk Pinkerton designed. Cool little... Uh, folding versions of this style of knife. What else do we have? We have, speaking of Dirk Pinkerton, here's my custom Pical from Dirk Pinkerton, a much uh, beefier, stouter, heavier affair, but uh, really quite amazing. I love this knife, man. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, Dirk Pinkerton is a master at grinding a blade for sure he is amazing um here it is with the copus designs elvia this has the sheath you can drop in your pocket and then when you pull it out just use that kind of like a an inverse sheathed wave system uh, but there it is with the with the whatchamacallit the elvia uh, a couple more cool ones here and then i'll show it with a couple of common fixed blade knives too uh, easier to get fixed blade knives, just so you have an idea. I love this thing, man. This, this, is, so, this is so great. The Copus Designs Elvia. Here it is with the uh, Bastinelli Anomaly. This one has a beautiful cord wrap on it from Bastien himself. Cool knife. Cool knife, however, I am uh, not a huge ring fan. And uh, we get into a, into that a little bit with uh, with Brian Moreland of JB Knives and and how uh, in those live uh, not live medium in those uh, organic medium tests that Ed Calderon puts on you really see the flaws of some designs and a lot of people have trouble with the rings especially with the thing moving around and your and, and the knife is in there and it's your finger is committed and uh, you know I'm not saying it's it's terrible but it, yeah i'm a little hesitant with the ring but i love i love karambits in these knives anyway just for their thinness uh here it is with a uh um felony stop by tops designed by is this Daraspina? i always forget uh no i think it's um oh senior moment don't get old people so there you go. I'm just going to leave that at that. This is the Topps Felony Stop, a great double-edged dagger style knife. Um, but it's got it's got some curves and some things that are reminiscent of the ditch pick. Um, so I wanted to show it with that. Let's see. Oh, a couple, couple more, a couple more. Stick with me. Here it is with a uh, strike, uh, rapid strike, double-edged from Topps. That's a very easy to EDC double-edged fixed blade knife. Here it is with my custom uh, Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo, which is another most carried. Like these are probably my two most carried right now. And a lot of it has to do with A, the capability, but B, the thinness, the size, the weight. Two great knives. Two great knives that frankly look great together. All right. All right, three more, three more. Now these are more common EDC fixed blade knives, or three or four here. Here it is with the Minimalist. I know you're at, you're probably laughing like with these, but this is a knife that many people carry every day and it's a fixed blade knife. So I wanna give you an idea of the size of this. And it is very easy to wield, very, or very easy to carry, I gotta say. Here it is with a, uh, cold steel spike in Tanto. That's a four inch blade there. And then two more, and then we're done. <laughs> but I just really wanted to show it with a bunch of knives. Here it is with the Obaki from CRKT, a very, very popular fixed blade um, EDC knife, thin. This is a great knife. 
I gotta say, thin and uh, ready to go, about the same size, uh, about the same length and everything. Uh, not double-edged, but uh, a similar size. And then here it is with the Tops 2.5, another fixed blade knife that a lot of people carry uh, frequently, uh, whether they drop it in the pocket or hang it around the neck. If you know the size of this knife, then you'll have some idea of the size of this knife. All right, let me clear these out. As usual, I've gone on at length, but uh, here it is, the JB Knives Ditch Pick. Check them out at uh, JB Knives on Instagram. They have a website as well. And please, please, please check out my podcast with Brian Moreland of JB Knives. That's the Knife Junkie Podcast, episode 258, I believe. All right, thanks for watching.